Welcome to the Statistic NDD YouTube channel. This is another episode of the series What Can Go Wrong in R and today's video is about factors. Factors are a data structure in R for categorical data with a predefined set of categories that are called levels in R. And a couple of things can go wrong when dealing with factors and we look at a few examples. So there are three issues that we want to talk about today. So the first one is a warning, invalid factor levels. So we'll see example of that and how to get around that. The second one is um, we get a chance to recode factors in the wrong way. So we'll do that and see how we can solve that. And thirdly, a classical issue is when we have numbers in a factor variable and we want to convert that factor to numeric, that can go wrong as well. And we'll see how this can about come about and how we can solve that. Um, the trick here is that for the first case we get a warning at least, so we may assume that something didn't go the way we expected, so the warning is invalid factor level, NA generated. For the second and third case we don't get a warning, we don't get an error and we have to be very careful not to run into this challenge. So let's dive right in. For the first case, invalid factor levels, there's a simple example that you can see here. We're working on a single vector here. We assign it the first four letters of the alphabet, A, B, C, D. And then I want to add a fifth element in fifth position here using base R's square bracket indexing. Um, I add this E, but I get this warning invalid factor level NA generated. Note that a warning is not an error, so the code doesn't um, um, refuse to do the operation at all. An operation is carried out, we get a fifth element, but it doesn't contain the letter E as we may have wanted, but it contains an NA. In data analysis, in many cases, you will not work with factors as single vectors, but probably as variables inside a data frame. So I created a second example here on the right hand side, a typical use case where we can argue that this behavior of R is actually not a bug, but a feature. So we may value that. So here on the right hand side I have a Likert scale. Um, I kept it simple with three entries only, strongly agree, agree and disagree. So these are clearly um, defined categories and we want to make sure that the spelling is always correct because we don't want to have more categories just due to different spellings. And let's say we get new data um, with the same variable, just question one, Q1. Um, and it contains the entry strongly agreed and note the D at the end so the spelling doesn't align and when I then um, insert this new data in the fourth row of my data frame I get this warning invalid factor level NA generated. So in this case I may be thankful actually for this warning and not be too upset about it because it warns me of um, a non-aligning spelling. Um, but in many use cases we may not want that behavior, we may want to just um, join the data and get valid data and not NA values. So we'll see how to do that. So for the first case, a single vector that we saw on the previous slide, um, we have to make sure that the new entry that we want to add is defined as a level. So one solution is to explicitly define the levels. There's a levels function in base R and I can use the existing levels of F and add a new level E. So note that this highlighted line of code doesn't actually change the contents of F, it just defines a new factor level. And then in the next line of code I can add the element E in fifth position and now it works as expected. I've got A, B, C, D, E and also the levels are A, B, C, D, E. So that's one solution to this challenge. Another solution that is simpler is just to use the C function, concatenate. So I use the same factor as before with the letters A, B, C, D and I use the C function to add an element E, but note that this element E here is defined as a factor. We'll get back to that in a later example in this video. So I add the element E, but I define it as a factor and then I get the same result A, B, C, D, E. So no warning, no NA is generated, but valid data using the C function or predefining 
the levels of my vector. So these are the two solutions here for a single vector. For the data frame case, there are several solutions that we can use. So I kept it simpler here, not using the Likert scale from the previous slide, but just using entries A and B um, for the existing data, df, and then um, adding a new data frame, df new, with just one variable, question one, and it contains a factor with the entry C. Um, and if I want to get valid data without manually fiddling with factor levels, I can use the rbind function um, to bind rows, we can say, to add a row to my data set, df and df new. So that gives me this result that we see here. It is a factor. We don't see that in the output here, but it is defined as a factor with the three factor levels A, B, C as expected. Then there are three commented out lines of code that all yield exactly the same result. So if you prefer dplyr, you can use the bind rows function to get the same result. And for other use cases, maybe a merge function may be useful. So for this simple example, it gives the same result as well. Note that I set the parameter all equals true here. Um, so for merging, you can decide if you just want all the data that corresponds um, to the first data set or to the second. So there are also arguments or parameters all.x and all.y. And alternatively, if you're more into the tidyverse, you can use dplyr's join family of functions. So if you want to get all the data from the old and new data set, you can use the full join. And there are also functions left join and right join in dplyr if you just want um, one data set to be the master and only join data that corresponds to that. So, but for this simple use case that we have here, our bind gives exactly the same result as the three other approaches using bind rows, merge or dplyr's full join. Right, so these are several solutions for this first challenge with the invalid factor levels. Let's look at the second challenge, recoding factors in the wrong way. So it's a new example. Let's say Susan and Mike played a game or a couple of games and they record who won each game in a vector winners. And we see that Susan won three of the four games and Michael only managed to win the second game. So this is first a character vector, but then we convert this to a factor using the as factor function. This may make sense, for example, if we want to plot the results. For plots, categorical variables are treated as factors. So if you want to change, for example, the order in which categories appear, you need to um, define your character vector or your categorical variable as a factor and deal with the factor levels. So I may make another video about this later on. Um, I'm not showing any plots here, but if you want to change categories in plots, um, treat them as factors and deal with the factor levels. So now we have a factor, but the results are still the same. They played four games and Susan won three of them and Michael only managed to win the second game. And now let's recode the player names. And if you like to think about it for a moment, you can look at this code and predict what the output of this call to winners will be. You can pause the video now if you want to do that. I'll reveal it in a moment. So I'm recoding the levels of this factor. Um, before we had Susan and Michael and now let's say the players got more familiar and Susan said I want to be called Suze for this game or in this plot and Michael wants to be called Mike. So I change the levels of this factor to Suze and Mike. And now let's see what happens when I print out winners. Um, the levels are indeed Suze and Mike, so that looks good, but the results look suspicious. Now it turns out that Mike won three of the games and Suze only won one of the games, the second game. So this is probably not what we expected and what we wanted. Um, unless Mike wanted to cheat here in data preparation, but <laughs> that's probably not a good idea. He should rather try and actually win his games. Um, if we want to understand what happened, um, this line here of the results gives us an indication when we printed out the winner's factor. The first time we see the levels are Michael and Susan. Now look at the order. Um, Susan appears first in the vector, but the first factor level is Michael. And that is because R by default orders factors in alphabetical order. So we have to respect that. 
and here we did not respect that I just assigned Zeus as the first level and Zeus actually replaced the level Michael and Mike replaced the level Susan so this is how this fault came about and we mixed up the results so let's see how we can do better I already gave a hint um, the first and simple solution would be to respect the alphabetical order of factor levels so um, we are creating this, the same vector again here and the only change here is that when I reassign the levels of this factor I make sure that Mike comes first because it's first in the alphabet and Zeus is second and now it works and the results should be correct Zeus won three of the four games and Mike only won the second game as should be the case so this is a pure base R solution I must say that I'm not too fond of it I think it is a bit dangerous to do it this way you have to be very careful and it's easy to make mistakes here so I think a better solution is to use explicit recoding and I recommend the 4cats package to do that also every time you have to deal with um, plots and categories and plots I recommend the 4cats package it's got a lot of powerful functions to deal with factor levels and makes it really fun and less error prone 4cats is part of the tidyverse so if you do library tidyverse the 4cats package gets loaded alongside you can also load it separately just typing library 4cats or you can use this double colon not notation if you just use one function once you don't even need to load the package of course it has to be installed for this code to work so a lot of the functions in the 4cats package start with fct underscore so if you just take away from this video to use 4cats and you're not sure what the functions are called that you're looking for you can use RStudio's context menu and type question mark fct underscore and you get a context help menu that lists all the functions that start with fct underscore that you can use to deal with factor levels so in this case we use the factor recode function from 4cats and you see what I mean by explicit recoding here it's more readable and less error prone I think because using this named vector notation I say that Suze is supposed to replace Susan and Mike is supposed to replace Michael so here I don't have to worry about the order um, I can start with Sus. don't need to think about the alphabet and yeah it's less likely to make mistakes this way the result is the same as on the left side um, Zeus won three of the games and Mike only won the second game as should be the case note that dplyr also has a recode function but the order of arguments is unintuitive there so you can use that but I think it's no longer recommended by the tidyverse team so my recommendation would be to use the 4cats package to do that right so that was the second challenge and now on to the third challenge converting factors to numeric this is a classic really so the classical gotcha is here on the left hand side we have a factor with the numbers 6 to 10 so that factor looks good the values are 6 to 10 and the levels are 6 to 10 and when I want to convert that to a numeric um, vector I can use the as numeric function and it gives me the result I probably didn't want to have the numbers from 1 to 5 so this is a classical gotcha when dealing with factors that hold numbers um, when we want to understand why this happens the str function may help a little bit we can look at the structure of this factor and it shows me it's a factor with five levels starting at six but here on the right end of the output we see that um, the factor levels are internally coded with numbers and these numbers always start with one so um, it turns out that the as numeric function uses this internal coding to return these numbers and not the numbers that we expected so how can we avoid this error um, we'll see that on the next slide but I may surprise you so I think this is maybe a bit more well known in the R community but I have a second issue where um, a similar problem can come up and that is the C function can surprise you maybe in some cases so this example is a little bit different we're going back to the letters again a b c d um, and now I'm using the c function we saw a similar example before but here I don't use um, the factor function to define e as a factor I just concatenate the factor f and the new element e and the result is probably not what you would expect um, 
for the old factor f we get the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4 and then we get the element e and the result is a character vector. So this is really um, I think a bit unintuitive and a dangerous way of using the C function and a reason why the tidyverse team has created a package called vectors I think you pronounce it VCTRS so no vowels in that package name but I pronounce it vectors and there's a function like vec underscore c and a couple of similar functions. The nice thing is as tidyverse users we don't usually have to worry about this package at all it's just um, a package that does some work in the background so that the tidyverse doesn't fall into some of the pitfalls of the base rc function but using um, a replacement instead. So let's see how we can solve these two issues. So for the classical gotcha um, the solution is very simple. Um, before converting to numeric we convert the factor to character. So first converting to character and then to numeric and then with this example the numbers from 6 to 10 we indeed get a numeric vector back that holds the expected numbers from 6 to 10. Note that here I used base R's pipe operator that was introduced in R version 4.1. So if you don't like that, I like it for readability here, um, but you can also use the classical approach that you see here in this comment um, with nested parentheses as numeric as character F, so that works just as well. I just don't find it so reader friendly because um, the important takeaway here is that first you have to convert to character, so here we have to read from inside out or from right to left, and after it has been converted to character you have to convert it to numeric. An interesting side note, checking R's documentation for the factor function, a different solution is recommended for this. Um, R core or base R recommends to use the as numeric function on the levels of F and then index by F. So this gives exactly the same result but it's supposed to be more efficient so you, if you have huge data and runtimes are critical this latter, latter approach and the second highlighted number is more efficient than the first approach um, but I think for most use cases runtimes of this will not be critical the difference shouldn't be huge and I find the as character as numeric solution um, that is more popular and more well known also more reader friendly but it's up to you which one you use both work and give the expected correct result and about this C surprise that we saw on the previous slide. Um, I'm going back to this example and you may have guessed it, we saw it before. Um, in this video we're using the letters from A to D again and when we add the letter E we have to make sure that it is a factor and then the C function gives us the expected result. If we leave out this factor um, part here in this highlighted code um, then we get this unexpected result with the numbers 1 to 4 and the element E as a character vector. But if both F and E are factors, we get the expected result. So that was it for today. Maybe just a historical note. Um, factors have given a lot of R users headaches, I think, and caused some unexpected results. And this is a bit less the case now than it used to be because the popular functions data frame to create data inside your script as well as read CSV or read table to read flat files um, or CSV files respectively um, had their default behavior changed in R version 4.0. So in earlier times um, they used to import categorical variables as factors uh, which is not so easy to handle so this default behavior was changed to strings as factors equals false um, that's what the parameters called um, and now categorical variables are imported as character strings which is in many cases more user friendly for both um, the data frame function and the read CSV function and in a couple of other places probably as well. So that was it for today I wish you all the best for your data analysis projects um, as little headaches as possible and um, a lot of success. Um, if you like the video give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already, that really helps. All the best, see you next time, ciao!